Lesson 5.3, Word Problem Solving, and we're going to use the distributive property. If you haven't seen the previous videos, you might become lost or confused, and there's a link in this video's description so that you can go to the playlist and watch them. We can use the strategy draw a diagram to multiply with multiples of 10. We can use grid paper to make an area model for multiplication. We can use the distributive property to break apart a factor into multiplication facts we already know to find a product. If you didn't see the video about distributive property, that was 4.4, and it's linked in the description, so you can watch that. So here's a guide for solving word problems. The first thing we want to do is read the problem carefully. And the second thing is we ask ourselves what we need to find. Then we identify the important information. We can, we can circle the important numbers. Then we make a plan using the information we circled to solve the problem. We solve the problem and then last we check our answers to make sure it makes sense. There are four rows of plants with 20 plants in each row. If three of the rows are marigold plants, how many marigold plants are there? So we need to find the amount of marigolds, marigold plants. The important information is that there's 20 plants in each row and that three rows are marigolds. We can draw a diagram that is an area model to solve the problem, but be careful of unnecessary information. Do you see information in this word problem that we don't need? What do you see? You notice the first part of this problem says there are four rows of plants? Well, it's really not important that there's four rows of plants. What's important is that there's three rows that are marigolds and there's 20 in each row. Many times, word problems have unnecessary information. You might have to read the problem once or twice to fully understand what is the important information. So we can make an area model. We use grid paper to show three rows, right here, of 20 as three rows of 10 plus 10. We can use the sum of the products of the smaller rectangles to find how many marigolds there are. So remember the distributive property says multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying the add-ins by the number. We're going to get the same product. So we can multiply 3 times 20 as 3 times 10 plus 10. We distribute this 3 to the 10 plus the 3 to the 10. So we have 3 times 10 plus 3 times 10. And it might be easier to multiply smaller numbers like 10s. 3 times 10 is equal to 30 plus another 3 times 10 is equal to 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. So there are 60 marigold plants. We can break apart a large factor into smaller numbers. To use the distributive property, it will be easier to multiply smaller numbers. Maybe they're multiplication facts you already know. Bob saw five rows of cars in a parking lot and he counted 30 cars in each row. How many cars were in the parking lot? We can break apart 30 into 10 plus 10 plus 10 and use an area model to show five rows of 30. We broke it into 10 plus 10 plus 10. We have 5 times 10 plus 5 times 10 plus 5 times 10. 5 times 10 is equal to 50 plus another one. 5 times 10 is equal to 50 plus another 5 times 10 is equal to 50. We have 50 plus 50 plus 50. We do our addition and we see that there are 150 cars in the parking lot. And we can check our answer with repeated addition. If we have 5 times 30, that means we have 5 groups of 30. We can add 5 30s together. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can do the addition. 
it equals 150, so we know we have the right answer and that it makes sense. Now this problem has a lot of steps to it, and the steps aren't difficult, there's just a lot of them. So let's see if we can really try to pay attention. Tala planted six rows of tomato plants with 20 in each row. She also planted eight rows of peppers with 20 in each row, and five rows of beans with 10 in each row. How many plants did Tala plant altogether? So the way to solve this is to break the problem into little pieces. Let's first do six rows of tomato plants with 20 in each row. That's six times 20, six rows of 20. We can break it into six times 10 plus 10. That would be six times 10 by distributing the six to that 10 plus another six times 10. Six times 10 is 60 plus six times 10 is 60. Now let's do the peppers. She planted eight rows of peppers with 20 in each row. That's eight groups of 20, that's eight times 20. We can use the distributive property and do eight times 10 plus eight times 10. Eight times 10 is 80 plus eight times 10 is 80. Now we have 60 plus 60 plus 80 plus 80. Now let's do the last part. There were five rows of beans with 10 in each row. That's five times 10, five groups of 10. That's 50. We take our add-ins and we can even stack them on scratch paper and we add them all up. Six plus 60 plus 60 is 120. If we add 80 to that, we're gonna have 200. We add another 80 and the other 50 and we get a total of 330. So we know Tala planted 330 plants. So by breaking this word problem into three parts, the part with tomatoes, the part with peppers, then the part with beans, we were able to do the part with tomatoes, then the part with peppers, and then the part with beans, and then add them all together. Because remember, the distributive property says multiplying a sum by a number is the same as multiplying the add-ins by the number. So we can multiply the sum of 10 plus 10 as 20, or we can do 10 plus 10. It's gonna be the same product, okay? So just break big word problems into smaller pieces. To get new equipment, a robotics club needs to sell 250 candy bars. Three students each sell 20 candy bars on Monday Five students each sell 30 on Tuesday. How many candy bars do they still need to sell? So we know they need to sell 250 candy bars. That's important. Three students each sell 20 candy bars on Monday. And five students each sell 30 candy bars on Tuesday. We figure out what we need to find. We need to find the total sold and subtract that amount from 250 to find how many they still need to sell. We're looking for how many they still need to sell. So we need to total up the amounts that they did sell, subtract it from what they need to sell, and we'll know how many they still need. Three students sold 20 candy bars each on Monday. So we have three times 20 for Monday. We need to add it to the five students who sold 30 candy bars each on Tuesday. So that's five times 30. We can use the distributive property and break 20 into 10 plus 10. Then we have three times 10 plus three times 10. Three times 10 is 30 plus three times 10 is 30. So now we have 30 plus 30 here. We can break this 30 into a 10 plus 10 plus 10 and distribute the five to each 10. That gives us five times 10 plus five times 10 plus five times 10. That gives us 50 plus 50 plus 50. Now we can add these add-ins all up. We can stack them if we need to on scratch paper on the side. And we add 30, 30, 50, 50, and 50 and 
we get a total of 210 that have been sold. We know they needed to sell 250. We subtract the 210 they've already sold, and we know they need to sell 40 candy bars still. We broke the 3 times 20 into a 3 times 10 plus 10. We broke the 5 times 30 into a 5 times 10 plus 5 times 10 plus 5 times 10. And you can use an area model with grid paper or graph paper to help you. There's a trick to multiply groups of tens quickly. If we have 3 times 20, we think 3 times 2 tens, or 3 times 2. That's 6. That would be 6 tens, and 6 tens is equal to 60. 5 times three, 30, we think 5 times 3 tens. 5 times 3 is 15. That means we have 15 tens and 15 tens is equal to 150. So be careful when you're doing this because it only works if there's zero ones. Here we have three tens, there's no ones. That's when it works, okay? But it'll help you multiply groups of tens quickly. We'll talk about that more in the next video. Now I've said several times throughout this playlist, you need to memorize the multiplication facts before fourth grade starts. And we're in chapter five now. So by now, by chapter five, you should have the zero, one, two, five, and 10 times table memorized. Go up to zero times 10, go up to 10 on each one of these and up to 10 times 10. You need to have them memorized by now. If you haven't, you need to start working on that because within the next couple of chapters, you need to have some other ones memorized. So you should have at least these by now. To have multiplication facts memorized, that means you know them as quickly as you know that one plus one is equal to two. You know it that fast. We're gonna talk about working with multiples of 10 in our next lesson. So remember, you can use an area model and some grid paper, you can draw a diagram and use the distributive property to solve word problems and break groups of tens up into smaller numbers. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.